Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video we'll be looking at texture maps and how we can use texture maps to create unique clothing in Dash Studio. So let's get to it. In this tutorial I'll be demystifying texture maps and how we can use texture maps to create unique design for any objects or any clothes that we have in Dash Studio. So the first thing I want to do is explain texture maps and what they are. So I'm going to go to my folder and we'll have a look at some texture maps. So what texture maps are, are just PNG files and JPEG files that when you add them into the IRA shader, you'll get unique effects on your clothing or item that you've added the texture map to. So if I go to my Word document here, I'll explain the different types of texture maps. You've got 1K size, you've got 2K size and 4K. These are like the standard sizes you would get. So 1K obviously is 1024 by 1024 pixels. 2K is 2048 by 2048 pixels. And 4K is 4096 by 4096 pixels. Now the higher you go up, the more memory you use in Dash Studio. So just be careful about that. So you don't want to go 4K for everything because not everything needs to be 4K. For maybe some clothing that you're going to do like a close-up detail on, you would go 4K. If you're going to do something like uh, add textures to say a ring that's very tidy, there's no point using 4K unless you're going to do a close-up of that ring. You would use something like 1K or maybe even less. You can go less if you want to. You can go 512 by 512 pixels, which is a lower resolution if you need to do that. Okay, so let's go back to the textures. So with the textures, you've got different types of textures. You've got roughness, opacity, ambient occlusion, base color, height, metallic, and normal. Now the names of these textures don't really matter too much because you can actually use them anywhere in the iris shader. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that right now. So let's go back to Dash Studio. So the first question you should be asking really is why do we use textures? Well, if you have a look at this dress right now, it's very boring. The most I can do with this is I can change the base color, which will give me a different color, whatever I choose, red. I could play around with the glossy roughness and the glossy color if I wanted to. I can add refraction if I want to. I can add metallic flakes. I can add top coat. I can even add metallicity. And that's the most you could do with the dress. So what we're trying to do really is add detail to the dress or add detail to the object to give it a unique look. So I'm going to turn off the metallicity. I'm going to turn off the base color, go back to white. Just put the glossy roughness back. So let's add our base color texture maps. So I'm going to click on the arrow here, go to browse and there's base color. Double click that. And there it is. So there's our effect added to our dress and already it looks very unique. It doesn't look, it looks way better than it did before. So we can obviously change the color. I'm going to go to my base color here, click on here and I can choose any color I want. I'm going to choose red. Uh, I might choose brighter red actually. Yeah, we'll choose a brighter red. And what that studio will do is it will change the color of that texture as best as it can. Sometimes you'll have a texture where you can't change the color as much or it will affect it too much and that depends on the texture. So for example, if I chose a different check texture and then chose red, not all of it will turn red because that's the way the texture works. Okay, so we have a base color applied. Great. So we're looking unique there. What else can we do? We can add a specular map or specular texture to control the glossiness of our, our dress. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to uh, glossy roughness. I'm going to click on the arrow here, go to browse and I'm going to choose, I can choose actually, I can choose any one of these because I'll tell you how the glossy um, roughness works. So I'll choose opacity, even though it doesn't say roughness on it or specular, you can use any one of these textures and you'll get a unique effect. So it's always worth trying uh, the textures and see what different effect you can get. So I'm going to add the opacity and I'm going to turn up the glossy roughness and you'll see something happen. So the way this works is these textures work, the ones that are black and white. If it's black, it won't be affected by the slider, the glossy roughness slider. It will stay glossy. And if it's white, it will be affected by the slider. So the only that part of the texture will add the roughness to. So I'll put the roughness all the way to one. So any part of the texture that's black, it won't affect. And any part of the texture that's white, it will affect with the slider. So if I change this, to a grayscale one. So for example, the height, which is a mixture of black and gray. You see we have a different effect. You see that the even though the glossy reference is still at one, the black part of the actual texture is staying the same. So it's not being affected by the glossy roughness. And the actual gray area is some of it's being affected, not all of it. So what happens with the gray when you have a gray 
uh, texture map with some gray in there. It's basically halfway, so it's meeting you halfway. It's like, I'll give you some of the roughness, but I won't give you all of it. So it's like a 50%. So you can see how different it looks. The dress looks very different now because we've added that glossy roughness. So the next thing we'll look at is the bump. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to go to bump. So I'm going to click on uh, the arrow here, go to browse. So I'm going to choose, uh, it doesn't matter which one we choose really, because obviously we get different effects. So I'm going to choose opacity here. And the base bump is set to one. So again, the way base bump works is the white area will be extruded, which means it will come out and the black area, which means it, it will go in. So black means it will go in and the white part will come out. So that's how you get this kind of fake detail effect using the bump map. So that's how base bump works. We can obviously increase this. So if you want to increase it, you would go to the parameter settings. Uh, the wheel here, parameter settings, you would go to use limits, you would untick that, click OK. And then now you can go higher up, so I can go 5, I can go 15, you go as high as you want. And you can see that it changes as it goes higher. Now this is a, a real, it is, this isn't, the base pump doesn't actually change the mesh or modify the mesh or the geometry of that object. All it's doing is adding fake detail to it, that's all it is, it's like fake detail. So again, if we add like a gray texture, a gray scale, so for example, the height here, you'll see it affects it differently. The black part's gone in, and then the gray part, because it's, a, it's in between gray and, uh, gray value is in between black and white, you'll get like a 50% kind of option going. So it's, you've got a different effect basically. So again, play with the base bump, try different base bump uh, map textures and see what effect you get. You can really get some really cool, unique effects. So I'm going to turn base bump off, none. And now we're going to look at the normal map. So I'm going to click on here, go to browse. And for the normal map, you would generally just use a normal map. You wouldn't use any of these maps because a normal map is very special. So value the normal map. And I'm just going to turn it back to one because I originally set the parameter setting to use no limits. So there's one. So it's very similar to the base bump option. However, I feel that normal maps are a lot better because you get better lighting from that more realistic lighting coming off it. So you can see like you've got lighting coming from here, 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 the glossiness is coming all the way from here. I think normal maps are newer and a lot better. And if you have a look at the normal map here, if I just put my uh, mouse over it, you can see that it's very different. You've got different hues of colors, blue, green, red, and that kind of controls um, the extrusion and how much uh, the the texture is being extruded and how much is going in. So again, we can use higher values if you want to. You can go five, you can go to 10, you go as high as you want. And as you go higher, you get these kind of uh, unique artifacts happening. So some of these artifacts are pretty cool as well. So that's what a normal map does. It creates like fake detail basically. So I'm gonna turn the normal map off and we're gonna go down now and we're gonna look at cutter opacity, which I've already covered. So I'm going to add out a cutter opacity now. I'm going to go to browse. I'm going to add the opacity, the actual opacity map. We're going to use this time the actual proper map we're supposed to use. So I'm going to add the opacity map. And then there you go. This is what the cutter opacity does. So again, when we're looking at that texture there, black, I'm not going to show. I'm going to hide it. And all the white parts, I'm going to show. That's how cutter opacity works. So black, I'm not going to show it. White, I'm going to show. So that's how cutter opacity works there as well. If we start to bring the slider down, you can see it just starts to literally uh, make it more transparent as you go along. I'm going to put that back up to one. So what happens when we add a grayscale value to there? So I'm going to add the height map. And then you'll see with the grayscale, it literally becomes transparent itself because gray is a middle value of white and black. So that's why it tries to make it makes it transparent automatically. Now, if we put the cutout opacity down while it's got this texture on, you can see it just starts to get rid of it more and more and more to the point where it doesn't exist. Okay. So I'm going to turn out cutout opacity. So the last one now is a displacement strength. So for the displacement, I'm going to go to browse and I'm going to add the actual uh, opacity and see what happens. Oh, the value's too high already. Should be on one really. So when the value is at one for displacement strength, not much happens. You need to actually go to the wheel here, go to parameters, parameters, sorry, parameter settings and untick use limits because you need to go a bit higher to see the actual mesh change. 
You can see it deforming a bit actually here already. So I'm going to go to five. And you can see with the displacement, what happens is using this map here, it's actually uh, making changes to the actual mesh. So this is where it actually is actually making 3D changes to the mesh. It's actually getting that mesh and trying to convert it to that texture that we've got here. So if I turn the camera around here, you'll see it's literally going 360, trying to make that change and it's deforming already. So the higher we go, the more it does it. So again, this works exactly the same way as base bump. The black parts going in and the white parts coming out. Okay, so white parts being extruded and the black parts going in and it's literally deforming the mesh. And it's doing its best to deform the mesh to make it fit uh, to that texture and the, the scale that we've used. Now if I set this, now if we use a grayscale one, so if we actually use the actual height map we're supposed to use for the displacement strength, you can see it's slightly different. So you've got the black, which is going to go in, and then you've got gray, which is rumber halfway between. So it's going to displace it, but not as much as the white would. Uh, doesn't matter how high I go, it will try its best to deform it. And then there you go. You kind of, if you go to 100, you get this kind of area where the mesh is kind of going crazy. So this might be cool effect you're looking for maybe for something, but that's something you can look into. Okay, last but not least, remember you can always change the actual way these textures look. You can make them more dense, compact them, or the horizontal tiles or the vertical tiles. So you can go to the tiles here, just below the displacement strength, and we can add some values and we can change the look of it even more. So I can go higher or lower depending on what you want to achieve. So five here and then five on the tiles will give me that kind of unique effect there as well. So you can really go in, a in as much depth as you want to. You can change um, the glossy, the glossiness, you can affect what parts of the object uh, the glossiness is applied to. You can change the bump map. You can change what kinds of bump map you want and the normal map you want. You can change if you want to cut out, which parts you want to cut out, depending on the texture you use. And you can change the displacement strength, how much you want to modify the mesh and add that kind of 3D effect to the object. And you can also change the tiles, how much you want to affect the tiles, whether you want a denser look or you just want uh, the, unique, the look that's already on, the, the default look that the texture has. So there you have it, some fantastic information there on how you can use texture maps in Dash Studio to create new clothing and also how to use it within the Irish Shader in Dash Studio. And if you want to use the texture map that I use in this tutorial, link in the description box down below for that as well. And if you like this video and you found value from it, give it a thumbs up, most appreciated. If you have any comments, suggestions, leave them down below as well, most appreciated as well. And don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in next week's video.